Hello, everyone watching at home. You're with Adelaide Eternal bringing you our next coverage. This is the Adelaide Eternal Vintage Challenge from February 2019. I am Sava McClinton, and in the booth with me is Beckett Wolf. G'day, guys. So, here we have a match between Socrates Stavropoulos on the left. And he is on a bug mid-range deck. And then on the right, we have Steve Lowe, who is on Jeskai Control with Lavinia. Now, this is a new card, and it is probably probably the deck that we want to have a look at first, right? Yeah, I mean, everyone's talking about this card in vintage Lavinia, Azurius Renegade. Uh, she's, be, gonna, she's, she's pictured there on the screen for you in the deck list. And you can see that she has a, two lines of text, both of which are really, really relevant to vintage uh she's a hate bear so she has a, a two minor two two and she says opponents can't cast non-creature spells if they've got uh less lands than the number of mana uh, pips that you're paying and uh also if they cast a spell with no mana you counter it it's pretty specific to vintage right Moxon. yeah i mean there's a lot of cards all right i remember the first thing i was like oh yeah that stops force of will and then you're like oh that stops force of will it stops gush it stops yeah, like Moxon, you know. It, there, there's a huge amount, and there was just more and more. I was like, oh, yeah, stop saying, oh, stop saying. And it's a threat, and I know a 2 2 doesn't sound like a threat, but in vintage, um, sometimes it's all you need. I'm yeah. sure we've all died to Containment Priest before. Oh, yeah, Containment Priest and Snapcaster <laughs> Mage just ending the game. You know, you look at your threats, and you're like, these are my threats. Snapcaster Mage, wait, Snapcaster Mage is a threat? Oh, it is in vintage, right? You just you flash back a preordain and then just attack, you know nine times yeah and it says opponent as well not player so it's really one-sided it's uh it's a really cool hate bear you don't really need to um you know play base your deck around it all that much i think you could just chuck it into any sort of you know you could put it in a tempo list you could put it in a control list yeah and interestingly this was february 2019 so it was actually just after Lavinia had been released and became legal and we're all playing and of all the people that was actually sleeving Lavinia up uh, Steve Lowe was uh, is going to be featured in a couple of these these matches you're going to get to see Lavinia in action and a lot of people were not playing her mainly because they either couldn't get their hands on her or just weren't familiar enough to know uh, it's untested it's new we don't really know whether it's good or not we can tell you that at the end of this tournament you're probably going to be sleeving her up yeah, she's wicked. Yeah. The rest of the deck that Steve is actually playing is fundamentally a Pyromancer Mentor style Xerox deck. And as you can see, the card selection category for him is huge. All of these things are going to be triggering Monastery Mentor et al. And then you have a, a light suite of interaction. And you tend to just finish your game by, you know, Young Pyromancer tokens, Mentor tokens, or Lavinia herself attacking. No jet, though. I don't know why. Yeah, it's one of these um, really low to the ground. Uh, Steve low to Jess the ground. Guy. <laughs> yep. So Steve low to the ground is running a low to the ground Jess guy deck where you know you don't really need all of your Moxon because Young Pyromancer doesn't trigger off Moxon, whereas M Mentor does. So you kind of split your difference here and go, okay, I only want you know Moxon that are predominantly going to be able to cast um, uh, you know Azorius Renegade and maybe power out a Mentor, but not the full suite. So you don't have Crypt or Jet. A bit of a split the difference here. So let's have a quick look at Socrates' list. Now, Socrates is on Bug Midrange. And if you haven't seen this deck in action before, it is one of the players. It's like a, a Tier 2 deck in Vintage, but the difference between Tier 1 and Tier 2 isn't dramatic in Vintage because you've got a lot of really good swingy board states and swingy games. And Socrates is relying on that swinginess because he's got cards like Yixla Jailer in the main deck, which just catches your opponent off guard. And uh, cards like Managorja Hydra to replace Monastery Mentor as your big three drop finisher, as well as Manglehorn to punish the paradoxical outcome opponents along with Null Rod. And then it also has the ability to ramp out one of these three drop threats on turn two, either via a Deathrite Shaman on turn one or one of your Moxon. So it's just kind of got a lot of redundancy on giving yourself a really good turn two. If this deck's sweet, this is a really cool deck. I'm loving Manglehorn. I'm loving Gixler Jailer. Never seen it played. I remember seeing it and buying one when I first started playing Magic because I thought the card was cool. Yeah, I checked it sideboard in Vintage yeah, and you never bought it in. Never, or you, I never or you bring it in against Dredge and you just don't see it, so yeah, you just die. Right. But it's really cool to see it mainboard here. I don't know if it's correct, but it's cool. 
Um, and obviously, I think Leopold's the, the the big reason to be playing this deck right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's only got three there because I guess it is a um, it, you know, it is a difficult to cast spell and it is a legendary creature. But you could probably even go up to four. I think Leopold's really good. I think it's sweet. It pitches to force as well, which is nice having a blue card. And because you're running Saf. Emerald and Jet, and then Deathrite Shaman. The chances of you having the mana to cast it really, really high. Yeah. The only time you can't is when you have your Wasteland Strip Mine, Library of Alexandria. There's, there are six colorless sources in the deck, so you do sometimes get punished by them. But fundamentally, you think of Wasteland and Strip Mine as spells, right? They're a spell that consume your land drop that destroys target land. You know. Yeah. And is Manglehorn only opponents? Because I'm surprised he's not running the other. Moxon. He does have a main board now, right? But uh, not running the other Moxon. Yeah, I think the Deathrite Shaman are in place of the Moxon in a way. You know, they're a mana source that's also a threat uh, because if you flood out on Deathrite Shaman, it's pretty bad in a in a in a format filled with mental misstep and uh, your opponent running Moxon that don't interact with it. Uh, but it's going to be really interesting, interesting to see these two uh, opponents playing each other. Because it'll be largely dependent on whether or not Socrates opens with a Deathrite Shaman and gets ahead, uh, or whether um, Steve opens with a Lavinia and then prevents uh, Socrates from getting ahead. Mm. Shall we go down to the match? Yeah, let's do it. This is uh, this is actually a really interesting match with the, a lot more creatures than we yeah. used to. Speaking see. of creatures, there's Managorja Hydra Deathrite Shaman. So we've already we already know there's going to be a big turn one. And turn two. Here's a, a also big turn turn in the form Echo of snap. A call snap, right? Yeah. And let's let's do that. Let's do that. You know, draw three and draw three again. Why not? Okay, so leading off with an island into Mox Jet, and probably Jet going to make the death right. There we go, death right shaman. So that's a really nice opening. As you can see, you've actually got all three of your mana colors right there, ready to go. If there's a fetch land in the bin to play Leovold, so it's it's a non-trivial. Um, whilst Absolutely. It's Sox has got um, main board plus the storm as well here open. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so that that ancestral recall might end up getting mm. Sox was running caught. four missteps. So there's a there's a good chance that yeah there's the fetch land. What what you know how how often do you deny your opponent the fetch when you kind of go well he's already started out with island jet and death right and he's going to have a f- second land after this probably you know what, yeah, looking what at does Steve's list do? I'm not really sure mm. what he's fetching for I mean I guess you could have a call um, but you wouldn't would you read uh, ah I like, like this that makes sense yeah. yeah that makes a lot of sense um, because lightning bolt is lightning bolt is really relevant with removing creatures but imagine if Leobold gets played here and you go oh okay oh whoa, wasteland nice Wasteland on the opponent's mana source, but probably no follow-up play, which would be, yeah. that's These are the kind of Wastelands that aren't good, right? Where, you know, you, you snap off the Wasteland, you hope that you caught their mana. If you did, you feel like a genius. If you don't, you feel like, oh, you yeah, know, it feels right. just dismal, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't achieve anything if Steve's got backup lands. It's just literally, we're just slowing the game down. You're just going into late game. It does, however, deny gush in the event that your opponent ends up having a gush, that. and then they kind of go... I got you in response to your wasteland. The, the reason you do it, though, is as you say, like, yeah. there's a chance Steve just kept, like, a one land hand with Preordain. And you just and get him. you just got them. And mm-hmm. and they wouldn't have cast a Preordain because they, they cast the Bolt, you know, and then they can Preordain next turn to find their lands. It also indicates that your opponent doesn't have any uh, Moxum as sources of mana. So you go, oh, maybe this wasteland is a good play because I go, I know you don't have Moxum. You played one land, you used the Lightning Bolt. If you had a preordain or some such, some kind of cantrip, maybe I'm going to strain it in your hand if this is your only land. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, ideally you have uh, a threat. But, you know, vintage is a bit threat light, so... And this is a good example of a vintage game being threat light where mm. you've both done something really big turn one, but then nothing happens for a while. No misstep there from Sock. Yeah, no fluster storm either. So there's the ancestry called drawing all the way back up to a full hand for Steve. And probably followed up by that second land drop. So you can see how Wasteland looks embarrassing when you kind of go, I Wasteland you, but then they draw three cards and they always hit the land, you know? Yeah, so, right. <laughs> But it was it was probably the correct play in the vacuum, but uh, it, it can just sometimes just come back and bite you. There was no other land. It was just a Mox Ruby. I guess um, <clears throat> Sock doesn't have that much he can cast on colors with three. He mm. needs, he's got Ramanap and Mangle Horns and Managorja Hydra, which all require green. So... 
the wasteland hitting his third mana it doesn't it's not really relevant because he's going to have to hit a green to find to, to play Leovold to play Ramanap to play Manglehorn etc exactly um, he's already got access to Yixler Jail he's already got access to Deathrite Shaman really all he's switching off, off is um, one Jace the Mind Sculptor so he could have been thinking about that you know mm-hmm. mm, true uh, so here's a threat oh no it's not a threat time walk oh it's the embarrassing like time a, walk not a good time yeah. walk <laughs> Yeah, you know, some sometimes when there's a time walk and you kind of go, well, your opponent's done nothing, I've done nothing. Uh, the time walk, if it hits a land here, is going to be amazing. If it doesn't hit a land, it was just a, a, yeah, a, a cantrip. Right. And it did hit a land, which is good because now Steve is going to be able to power out something with a counter backup, you know, like a Lavinia with a Pyroblast backup or a uh, three drop Mentor or something. But you can sure. I mean, it basically just says like, oh, I didn't draw my land this turn. I get another shot at drawing my land this turn. Mm, That's yeah. all it says. Yeah. And, and time but walk- it also says that you've got something. Like, I want to hit the land because I want to do something. Like, you're not just time walking for no yeah, reason, right? That's right. So here's the reason, Lavinia. So Lavinia coming down here is relevant because uh, Sok has obviously got a three drop in hand in the form of Mana Gorge or Hydra and is waiting for that green source. What if he draws Emerald off the top? You know, something like that would be really punishing yeah, because absolutely. he can't play it. Pyroblast Mana up here for Steve as well. Yeah. Um, I think that was just Steve explaining it to Sock. And I dare say there's a lot of text. And as I said, when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, it stops heaps of things. And then someone else said, it stops mocks. And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I think it, there's a lot of gotcha factor with this card as well because it's so new. One of the most common gotchas is your your opponent holds up Force of Will and they go to force your thing and they tap four lands and a mox. And you're like, yeah, sure, it's counted. That's a good point, isn't it? Because <laughs> the other line yeah. of text, yeah, you, you are so have, used have to, to lands, you are yeah. so used to in vintage using your mox and just like land, but in this particular instance, they are not. Absolutely, the beats begin. So S- Steve putting the beats on with uh, the hate bear, but followed up with Dak Ooh. Faden is huge. If this Dak Faden resolves, it's going to be dramatic. I'd say it surely has to resolve. I mean, what? Has Sock got, you know, Flosser Storm doesn't hit it, so... Oh, that's really painful, right? When your opponent's been struggling for mana and... Tap that Mox Jet as well in response, yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> we'll I've, assume that happened. I've been done I've been done with that. I didn't I didn't tap it in response. Um, and they used the mana and cast a game-winning threat, so you got to mm. make a difference. So my question last turn was, if Socrates drew his third land... Why didn't he fetch for Trop and play Mana Gorge Hydra there? Was he afraid that something would counter it? Because at the end of the day, when your opponent has only red source up, one of the best reasons to be in bug is that Mana well, Gorge Hydra... could he? Because it was Mox Jet. Because of no, Lavinia. No, but it's a creature. It's a creature. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have a look at Lavinia again. <laughs> yeah. So it's so creatures so don't creatures get affected because I hate there oh, okay. specifically for control stuff. Um, so oh, he's got it here now, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got it now, but maybe he misinterpreted that he couldn't play a three drop before because well, of the mox. Lavinia, I'm reading it now. Lavinia says it does say non creature, but the second line of text says any spell. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, if so no mana was cast. You are absolutely right. No, 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 I'm not. No, it's no, I'm not. It's no, no mana. It's 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 complicated though. Okay. The the casting spells above land that's only for non-creature casting spells with without spending any mana that's any spell yeah so so maybe he misinterpreted that yeah the mox jet wasn't able to be the third land effectively to actually cast a uh and there's a force of will very one-sided doesn't it when you're allowed a force and your opponent isn't yeah it's a bit rude isn't it I don't know what the flavor is there. That, uh, I guess Lavinia is uh, from the Azorius, and the Azorius Guild are all about making things fair, and for some people more fair than others. <laughs> so we, we're yet in there rumbling into the red zone with the uh, with the Lavinia. Now, uh, whether or not it was a misplay to not cast the Mana Gorge or Hydra, it's going to be really relevant here that the Force of Will... Remember, there's only a limited amount of interaction on the stack that uh, Steve's deck has... If there is no other force of will, then that mana gorge hydra is going to resolve, and that's going to be pretty powerful. You I know, feel a green like this threat. is um, getting very far away from sock, and and I think it's the power of Lavinia. You know that it's hard to have busted turns. Yeah, and talking about busted turns, here's a float some mana gush, make a token with the young pyromancer, 
Sadly, the token is not a branded Adelaide Eternal token, uh, which are available uh, for... Well, we'll, we'll be having words with Stephen. <laughs> Don't you worry. Um, so here we get to do the beautiful play of, you know, floating some mana, replaying the land, so you get to have a nice land light Now that's situation. a bit of time warp. Yeah, no, it's not a time warp, it's an A call here. Oh, I prefer so, time warp. Yeah, there wasn't enough mana, but what Steve wanted to do was whilst whilst Socrates was tapped out, take advantage of him being tapped out to actually just just run out all of my threats, including a call, you know, um, and that involved having he's the... He's gushed this turn as well. Do you think he's going to have to discard the hand size? Probably. I wouldn't mind waiting a turn and um, snap snap time walking, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. I think time walking is really strong. Maybe he got, didn't have a third You've got lane. a lot of damage. You've got Dak. Yeah, you know. I, I agree. But maybe he didn't have a third land to play and he wanted to get value on the land drop off the gush. That of, often happens. So yeah, it looks like he's discarding real cards here, which means that he didn't have a, a third land. So we don't hear the second. So here comes a Mana Gorge Hydra, I assume. This is, yeah, this... Oh no, it's Ram Ramanap up. Excavator with a Wasteland or a Fetch Land in the graveyard. Uh, well, the, look, Pyroblast doesn't hit these things and Steve has correctly recognised that uh, yeah, there's the Wasteland. Uh, has currently recognised that Pyroblast isn't great against Bug because so many of their threats are non-blue. You know, you've got Managorja Hydra, you've got uh, the Mangle Horn, you've got the Ramanat Excavator, and so on. So Shaman. Mm, Death Rite Shaman as well. So that's probably... Uh, this. Well, this is interesting, right? So the Wasteland is going to be recurring for the rest of the game unless there's some kind of removal for Ramanap and... Like we saw, aside from that one of two lightning bolts, there's really very few ways that that uh, Ramnap Excavator can be it, answered. I think it's three bolt main board, one sideboard? Three lightning bolt. Okay, yeah. so there are other answers for it then. But the two threes is relevant. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are all two power creatures. I think eventually Steve's going to get there going wide with young Pyromancer being able oh, yeah. to just play magic. Um, I, I would say that the way to get there is the fact that you have a resolved Dak Fade and your opponent does not. Well, here's okay, a Lightning Bolt, bolt. so yeah. Dak Fade managed to find a Lightning Bolt, which was very relevant. Again, Should like be. like most of Bugs... Yeah, like most... Uh, yeah, this is a... I think this is a really good place to concede. Like, if you... If you are this far behind and you don't have something like Balance in your deck, uh, then it's very, very hard to claw back. Because remember that the bug mid-range deck is not a combo deck. You don't have some kind of like, oh, look, I've got a sneaky tendrils win or I've got a tinker blight steal or I've got a, you know, some kind of way to just win out of nowhere. You're a fair deck. And in Vintage, when you're a fair deck and you're behind that far and you don't have something like balance, you know, access to white. Yeah, played out a lot like a sort of Highlander mid-range or a legacy mid-range, mm. you know, bug goif sort of deck. For sure. That's how it sort of played out a little bit. Not quite as aggressive even. So speaking of uh, this particular matchup with this kind of strange mid rangey versus control -y type builds, what do you reckon post-sideboard from both decks? Mm. They've got a lot of graveyard hate. So going into this tournament, everyone was obviously really respecting Dredge. So they ended up having between seven and eight graveyard hate cards. So there's only a few things. For well, Socrates... Yeah, I think Crucible of Worlds I like. Yeah, it's basically just Crucible and that's it. There's no other card there that you bring in. So he brings in... He's already probably good against this kind of a, you know, blue deck with Pyroblasts. Okay, I've got some green threats. So he's just bringing in one card. For Steve, though, uh, he's got the uh, the symptom of new card. So when you've got a new card and you kind of find slots in your main deck and you go, oh, I'm going to fit in three Lavinia, something has to get trimmed. And so he's ended up trimming some cards and then wanting to keep them in the sideboard. The cards that were named are Jason Mind Sculptor and uh, probably that Lightning Bolt. Those are two cards that look like main deck cards that got trimmed to the board. Uh, this means, obviously, that overall the raw power of his sideboard is lower because he's got flexible cards in the sideboard as opposed to powerful cards. But it does mean that he's going to be able to go up to a Bolt a bolt and a Pyroblast and a Jace. Maybe he doesn't even want that many Pyroblasts. Well, he's got pyroblasts. two in the main. So there was the hand for Sock, and it had a mental misstep, which is really important in this kind of a matchup, just to deny your opponent... Um, interaction. So, you know, you play Deathrite Shaman, they go to the Lightning Bolter and you min mental misstep it. Feels very, very good. Uh, and obviously, there's only so many Lightning Bolts that Steve has access to. And Lightning Bolts are really the only thing that actually answer the green threats. Mana Gorge or Hydra. I think Bolt is very relevant in this matchup. Mm -hmm. um, so, he definitely wants that fourth Bolt. And I agree, he probably wants that Jason Mind Sculptor or the Jace's um, 
not great against the Leovold, is it? It's not great against Leovold, but it does bounce the Leovold, allowing you to get unlocked and then start to turn on your preordains and then find the actual answer for the Leovold. Oh, it's, yeah. yeah, but I mean, you know, at the end of the day, Leovold's a creature that can pressure the Jace oh, yeah, himself. for sure. Um, and, and when they have a Deathrite Shaman out as well, because they powered that Leovold off it, they've gone really wide and they're going to be able to kill that Jace really quickly. So here's a Mox, a Land... A uh, young pyromancer and then some blue cards. Did you see a time warp? I saw I a mental misstep and mental I saw misstep. a monastery. Uh, okay, yeah, I did. I miss miss saw that. Uh, so here's an opening preordain from Sock. And when you're preordaining in this kind of deck, you're either looking to hit your land drop or your threat, and that's really about it because you very rarely dig for protection because you have so many threats. Unlike other high, uh, vintage decks, you're really threat heavy. Uh, if you look at the number of threats he has access to. Uh, including Deathrite Shaman as well, vintage is traditionally huge. very threat light, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and so I think it's it's almost, there's almost a bit of a gotcha factor, strangely enough, for a mid range deck. Yeah, that's it. So like a lot of the time, you when everyone's really threat light, they've only got you know four or five ways to close the game, and they use their preordains to find force of will to protect those threats and so on. You don't need to do that here. You just go, well, look, I'm going to run out this threat, and they try and answer it, and then I run out the second threat. That one sticks. It happens to be managed Gorge or Hydra. It goes a distance and just kills you. Yeah, so, that's why mana drains not like people aren't playing as many mana drains now. It's because you don't. I think mana drain would would be good in this sort of matchup because there's like it's just plays like a counter spell, but. I was really hoping for Null right there from Sog, by the way. No, oh, that would be so painful, <laughs> wouldn't it? So here we have uh, Steve on a double Mox No Land hand, and there is a Young Pyromancer. Now, I, do you remember if the Young Pyromancer was in the in the hand or not, in the opening hand? Because uh, if he chose not to run it out on turn one, is that a sign that you have a Pyroblast or something? Or what, what, what would that mean? I feel like he just saw two lands and didn't. Uh, he must have ripped the pyromancer. Yeah. Maybe he was waiting for blue so that he can, like yeah, a blue he can land. Trigger so he it can straight away. Trigger it straight away. Mm, when it gets but, abrupt. But, you know, it's not modern. Like, I, I don't know. He's not. Uh, there's not that many fatal push sort of effects. There is abrupt decay in um, Socks List, but. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I would probably have played the pyromancer as soon as possible. But yeah. You can. Those but, watching at home, you can just rewind it and see whether the pyro was in opening hand or not because that. that is interesting you know sometimes you do represent that you have a pyroblast instead and <laughs> Wait, like, not looking good Wait, against Wait, the no land oh, this is, hand. This is actually this kind is of tech, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so yixla jailer yixla oh, jailer yeah. um shuts off all abilities and graveyards and is really relevant against snapcaster mages now for socrates socrates is not playing any snapcaster mages so his snapcaster mage slot is the yixla jailer this is some real true mid-range isn't it yeah uh, definitely sacrificing a bit of raw power for a bit of gotcha factor, mm. a, a way to sort of beat, you know, reanimate style decks um, main board, um, and also a, a way to be a bit more aggressive. You know, it's a little bit more proactive than a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah. So this is probably a crack lotus for a uh, triple blue. Mm. Have one blue floating, and that blue is ready to you know preordain and trigger both of your guys. Oh, look at this! Really oh, good. that is good. So, and oh, another. and another one. Oh, look, and Mind Break Trap. Yeah. Okay. Guess what? Oh, that is painful. So not even though Steve is making a bunch of tokens, keep in mind that Black Lotus was the first spell for the turn. So Socrates had Mind Break Trap and was waiting to cut, uh, to ha cause a counter battle. But oh, here's a Force man. of Will on the Mind Break Trap. Mind Break Trap is not like Flusterstorm, wherein you can split it up and it's really hard to deal with with a Force. That Force of Will is amazing. So Steve here got to trigger three, triggers? three times. That's three Monk tokens and three Young Pyromancer tokens. This would easily present lethal. How many Toxic Gildies you just stopped playing? Right <laughs> this is exactly what we were talking about before, wasn't it? That once the mid-range deck is behind... It has very few ways to re-establish and its control. Sav, I'm actually going to call it. Um, sorry to the listeners at home, but I'm looking at Sock's list. I think there's literally zero cards that gets him out of this. Mm. Like literally zero. He needs to go. It needs to be a um, what do you call it? A Managorja Hydra into a Mox, and then a Time Walk into you know like it has to be one of these really really crazy perfect hands. And unfortunately, I mean, Sock couldn't do anything else, but. It just fell into the classic trap of I'm fighting a counter battle once Mentor's out. It's as simple as that. And it becomes an interesting question also about the fact that the hand that Socrates kept was high on interaction. 
you know, really good with misstep and preordain and all these kind of things to find stuff, but had no threats. And his deck is meant to be high on threats. So the likelihood of him finding a threat was very high. So, you know, you probably keep that hand any day, but end up get, getting punished, didn't he? He did, yeah. It's a, interesting that Steve had no lands whatsoever mm. um, and was able to just win win this just with Moxon and Lotus. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, I mean, he did hit, hit Lotus Mentor, but... Um, yeah, Sock didn't unfortunately just have like a raw counter spell like Mana yeah. Drain or, or like Force a cheeky Null Rod or something. Yeah. Uh, and those wastelands, you know, you keep <laughs> yeah, a hand. Really. His hand was great, right? You, you you keep this, but then it ended up just lining up really poorly. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think there's any. You know, even if you hit perfect, you drew perfectly, like you know, drew time walks and acorns and whatever else. I, I think there's literally nothing that gets you out of this, right? Yeah, especially when there's one. There's no the board sweep for that. And Sock the, sees uh, the on the prowess. wall. <laughs> Wow. And that's that. Yeah, that's a fast one. So we saw the power of Lavinia in game one. We didn't see Lavinia game two, but we saw the power of Monastery Mentor, the restricted card in game two. So thank you very much for watching the first round of the Vintage uh, Challenge, where Adelaide Eternal will be back with round two next. See you then.